Today I have the promised video of me using the Winsor & Newton gouache to paint a little test piece, just to try out these paints a little more than just swatching. I think that is the real test of any art supply because they can look great in swatches and do everything you expect them to do, but once you start using them the way you like to create art, they might end up not being what you were looking for at all. So um, we're going to test it out and I'm going to do that following a little tutorial type video by Casey Golden. She is huge on YouTube, so I'm pretty sure all of you who follow me have also heard of Casey, but if you haven't, check out her channel. She is a great artist with such a nice illustrative style. It is super inspirational and uh, she's been around for quite a while, I think. She has um, somewhere into the millions of followers, so she's kind of a, uh, a pro at these types of things, much more than I am. So, um, you know, I'd recommend checking her out. So Casey made this video um, about painting simple flower fields with simple techniques. And as I said, she has a very illustrative style um, using a lot of blocks of color and uh, harsh lines and my technique is usually nowhere near that. Um, not that colorful but also not that um, shapely I would actually use that word. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right word but um, I felt inspired because she put cats in the painting. I mean that's where you already have me um, and I figured you know what I'm gonna try out these paints following along with that tutorial type video that she released about the, the flower fields and I'm actually gonna paint my two cats in that flower field because it would just be too dang cute I love working on the postcard sized watercolor paper you see here um, it is actually 25% cotton paper so it does pretty well um, but it doesn't take the real um, scrubbing and lots and lots of water as well it is not um, taped around the sides or, or glued to the side so it's not a block it's just loose postcards so I do have to kind of manage the water a little bit better here the reason why I like using the postcard size is because of the tiny size. It doesn't feel like you're throwing away a lot of paper that was pretty expensive. And I do tend to cherish things like paper, but really any art supply. Like I love receiving them, picking them out, and then if I spend a little money on it, it will feel so valuable that I'm almost afraid to use it. Um, which actually, uh, in a, a video of Irit, uh, I'm not sure what her last name is, but she also has a YouTube channel and she uh, talked about using watercolors in pretty inexpensive sketchbooks. Of course, the paper's not gonna do as well and it's gonna buckle, but um, she found it to be a lower threshold to just experiment and play. And th that advice just opened my eyes so much and I just dove right in and uh, now I have a, a lot of buckling paper in my sketchbook but I feel a lot less in need to make like a masterpiece on this pretty paper that I spent a lot of money on so um, there's no chance that she will ever see this video um, but if she might stumble upon it one day thank you for that advice Irid, because it has helped me in my art journey so much so I thought it would be nice mentioning it here to you guys that um, that really helped me and maybe it can help you in your art journey. So let's get back to the actual painting and use of these paints that this video is about. I'm sorry, I'm just rambling on about all these inspirational things and the way I use my art supplies. Um, going back to this gouache, as you can see, I've been mixing uh, green with some other colors to get a little variation in the greens that we use for the field. Um, that's actually also uh, how Casey did it in her video. And I left some white of the paper for um, the outline of the cats because my cats actually have a lot of white in their fur. 
I know with gouache it's supposed to be opaque, but I don't think it would be a bad thing to just help it a little bit um, and make sure that the white doesn't intermix with a layer of green under it because my kitties would look like they're grass stained, which sometimes they actually are <laughs> from being outside, but I wanted this painting to at least pretend that they're nice and clean most of the time. I started off using almost only um, purely gouache and of course they come from the tube so you can use them but what I found um, a little bit annoying but I've found this in a lot of gouache type paints but also in acrylics is that if you just use it straight out of the tube it doesn't give me um, that smooth type of paint that I can just drag across the paper easily because it will leave bit of a rough texture which if you're doing the um, dry brush technique that might be exactly what you want and you can achieve that with these paints very nicely but for me I've just found I had to add a little bit more water to make them smooth and to work with them the way I wanted to work with them um, they held up really nice and even adding the extra water didn't really do much in terms of lowering the opacity. They still covered that paper and that white of the paper so nicely. They handled exactly as I would expect gouache to handle. Now that being said, I am in no uh, way, shape, or form a professional gouache user, so don't just... Um, it's not like I've worked with so many types of gouache before, but in terms of what I thought gouache would be like and how it should work, this was it. It was opaque, it was activatable by water, um, it didn't spread ginormously um, that I didn't intend it to or in places I didn't want it. So it was actually perfect. And you can see me using the white on some of the green of the grass right now. And that was no problem at all. It just really layered on and was super, super opaque. So that is really, really good. Now I'm going in over the white with the um, orange of my kitty. Um, she has orange ears and a little orange snout. So super cute i found her um, because it it's like a bit of a gradient from her nose to the sides i found that pretty hard to do uh, with gouache i was quite figuring out how to keep that illustrative style that casey um you know tried to honor her style a bit um and how to work with uh, the actual colors of the kitty but uh, i made it more of a diamond shape so i guess it worked out so you can see that these paints mix very well and now we're going in with the bulging eyes that the kitties in Casey's uh, paintings also had. I really like that style. They just look so surprised and quite dumbfounded. It was, it was good so I thought I'd just copy that in there. Um, obviously she has, she's unmatched in how she does hers but yeah, giving it a go it was good fun and it took a bit of stress away because I could just look at what she did and try and make it a little bit similar and really see how flat these washes of gouache could get and they did that perfectly I totally get that with an illustrative style like Casey's um, this would be a great paint to have because they lay on flat and matte and um, you can water them down, they can be smooth, you can use them with dry brushing techniques, and they cover each other really nicely, so if you do want to go back and change a bit, that can be done. And I think if I were to scan this piece, that um, because of the madness of the paint, matness, not madness, I mean, paint wasn't mad, <laughs> luckily, it was, it would really tend to come out quite nicely and I have heard that that is a technique that some of the illustrators do tend to use like they um, illustrate it and color um, their pieces 
in real life <laughs> and then they scan it and they want the colors to come out looking really nice and vibrant and I think with this matte finish that these paints would do that really well. So I was pretty um, anxious about using black paint to paint on their little mouths because it would just stand out from the white so much and with watercolor you can kind of wash it down and um, make it a little bit more transparent so that if you don't get it right you can kind of go over it again. But that was not this style so I had to face my fears and put straight black paint um, in full. Um, 100% opacity, if you like, for the Photoshop users and among us, um, right on their little faces. Um, I was pretty happy with what I had created so far, so I was a little bit scared, but I think it worked out, so that was good. You can actually see me go in and edit the face of the back uh, kitty some more. You can see her in some of my thumbnails. I actually included her face and some of her kitten pictures because she was the, the cutest thing ever. Now we're going into the painting and actually focusing on the flower fields that uh, Casey was also including in her painting and I think she did some more videos actually with more of these flower fields because she had so much fun painting them. I have to say it is amazing and stunning how she does it with such a simple technique and she really takes you along with how she creates them and they do look like flowers even though it, up close they're just dots of paint but it's it's really quite skillful and I totally get why she hung on to this type of painting for a little while because I had so much fun you can just you know, create imaginary flowers. They don't have to particularly look like any type of realistic flower, but they can just be whatever they are and be in whatever color you want. And you can add them any place you think needs it. So this was really nice and relaxing and I didn't have to think too much about it. And this paint definitely didn't get in my way at any point. It did exactly what I wanted and it really uh, because of their vibrancy they really stood out um, and I know this youtuber called Arlie Bean has also categorized paints in paints that kind of make your life harder paints that mm, don't do anything special but don't work against you and then paints that are really something on their own and um, also work nicely and I think for me, these would fall in the last category because they are very opaque. They are very vibrant. Um, it is very matte. It is exactly what a gouache should be. They don't get in your way and you can create a nice little cute piece like this. And with that, we've reached the end of this painter's review of the Windsor and Newton gouache introductory set. If you like this video, consider giving it a like and a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. I'll link everyone I mentioned in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!